Hello. This video is about organization of Confi UI workflows. As you might have seen, Confi UI workflows can become very messy with many lines that are not clear where they came from. It will include notes about Confi UI Workspace Manager, efficiency nodes, template usage, node source name display, organizing, complex workflows using routes and buses or pipes. Now it's possible to have a workspace management using by going to the manager and install custom nodes. Now it's possible to look up for workspace, just search for workspace, you can see 11 cafe here. Now this workspace manager can be installed. Now installing this workspace manager gives us a way to manage our workspace such as workflows, which is really useful. It can be a useful thing here. Now if you come to the page here, it shows you examples of how this workspace management works, which allows us to have better organization of Confi UI. Now, once we are complete, we can do a restart. Okay, now this will close Confi. So now after we install this extension, we get buttons up here, which allows us to manage the workspace. For example, we can check here that we can create folders. We can rename these folders, such as video to video. Okay, video to video, for instance. Text to image, etc. So we can create a new workspace or new workflow and you need uh, organizing uh, organizing under folders we can check the settings from this location and change the folder location etc okay by clicking edit now the point is that now now we can create new workflows such as this this one is called okay we can give it a name for example test test one etc and this this test for example we can put it drag and drop it here and we have better organization of our workflows so well, when we create a new workflows, for example, if we add another, okay, note, whatever. So the point is, I just want to show you that we can actually open this workflow by double clicking it or drag it. For example, if we drag this workflow, okay, so this becomes like a preset. So I can add this workflow into an existing workflow, okay? So if we quick click here, we just drag it and we get another set of of blocks so this is this is this is a good way to manage workflows and use existing existing workflows now we can also connect uh, we can connect multiple nodes for example if we search, uh, choose uh, click this one and this one and empty latent for example and load checkpoint we can convert them into a group node now this group one for instance okay so this becomes like uh, combining multiple combining multiple nodes into the same group. Now, if we create a group node as well, for example, here, add a group, now group one, for instance, okay, and we made this group, once it touches these two group, these uh, two nodes, now we can see that uh, it tracks the, the movement of the group. Now, if we click right mouse click, and we can fit a group two nodes, so it automatically fits into the node. Okay, we can see that it has uh, add this one as well. Okay, we can remove it like this. Now there is something called efficiency nodes. Now efficiency nodes tries to combine multiple nodes at the same time. Now there are some uh, nodes that we can use uh, which are called efficiency nodes as well. From install custom nodes, we just search for efficiency. For example, we can use uh, this uh, this set. Now, if we check the web page here, we can see examples, which basically provi provides something similar or slightly similar to Automatic 11.11, which combines multiple, uh, which combines multiple uh, inputs and outputs in the same in the same node. Okay. Now, if we try to install this one, okay, we can uh, act we can also check. There are uh, X Y Z plots. If we check here, double click, we can see many examples that we can download and use in our own workspaces. We can see here that we just have like a loader, the unit or a case sampler, then the high resolution fix, which are similar, slightly similar to automatic 11.11. Now, if we download this to our computer, for example, okay, save as, just click save as, and then load the high resolution fix, for example, this one. We need to install it, I have installed it already. Okay, and we can drag and drop uh, the workflow down this location we can see that efficient loader basically contains all the information regarding loading of a model conditioning positive and negative and other stuff it's also very useful to have clip skip as well because some enemy uh, models uh, may, uh, have, are trained based on uh, clip skip of two 
some realistic models or other models are trained, uh, trained on tip skip one. So this is very useful to have this uh, value minus one or minus two. Now this is efficiency loader. This is like the unit and this becomes like the high resolution fix, which is a suitable uh, checkpoint. Okay, let's fake VRE. Now we press control enter to run the example. Now, uh, this provides a preview as well, just like automatic 11.11. Then, okay, we can disable this preview by checking none here, preview method. So we will not get this preview mode. Now, initially it will display the initial image, then it will do the high res fix and try to improve the quality of the image. So this is just like if you want to have something similar, okay? But uh, by using this method, we might have less control and uh, we, it might not be the best option, okay? So we can see, check, open, image. We can see this is our image. We can save it and use it if we like this image, for example. Now, uh, it's possible also to use multiple control nets at the same time, for example, using a, a single node, such as such as CR, Confirol, multi-control net, multi, multi-control net stack, okay? So this just provides us with something like having multiple control nets at the same time, but we need to provide to use the images, is okay. Now, these images can be a load image, which are pre-processed images, or can be a pre-processed image. For example, we can use it a carry preprocessor and have this image pre-processed, then fed to the control net. Okay. So this becomes like a multiple control net stack. We can click here. If we want to duplicate it, just click Alt and it will have another copy. We can have Open pose, for example, open pose preprocessor, and use Z for the second control net. So this is like a multiple control control net stack. Some people prefer to use multiple uh, these stacks because they look neater or similar on the workflow. Now this is the default workflow. Now sometimes we might build something. And we want to save this as a preset so that I don't need to build it every time. For example, if I'm creating a control net loader, which consists of control net, apply control net advanced, for instance, apply control net advanced, we have an image, a load image. We might also have a preprocessor, canny, for example, canny edge preprocessor, image, image. Okay, now we can see, see say that this is like a control net group, which could be used in uh, in so many uh, in, in other workflows. Okay, and now I explained before that we can actually save it as a workflow, just this one, save it as a workflow and drag and drop it here. We can also save this as a preset by clicking all these. We can click, click control and drag like this to select all of them. Now, if we want to save this as a template or a preset, we can also uh, right mouse click at this location and save as a template. For example, we can say it control net example one. Now, the next time I want this to be used elsewhere, we just come here and use not templates and use control net example one. So we get we can have it in multiple locations. So if we have another workflow, this is the default one. We just want to use it, the control net, because it's used so many, so many often. Okay, we can use it like this. Now, it's very useful to know uh, if a certain node belongs to a certain library. For example, uh, if I have a control net, okay, multi, multi-control net, for example, this one, and I want to know uh, which library does this belong to, we can come to manager and turn a badge on. So we can see that now we have a uh, it says that this comes from the Confural Studio. Now, these uh, this means that these are core packages, part of the uh, Confi UI. Now, there's something called lock as well. I think this comes from by 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 Python Go's uh, library. Now, this locking means that we cannot move this anymore until unless uh, we unlock it. Now regarding organization of the workflow, it's, it's very important and very useful to actually use uh, use routes, for example. Now we can see here, for instance, that the lines are going underneath the nodes, so we don't know where this comes from. So this can become very complicated when the workflow grows. So it's very, it's very useful to have something called uh, the routes, as I explained in the previous video. Okay, so this becomes like uh, a route. So, uh, 
the clip, for instance, we can also uh, reroute it and organize it like this. So that's, for example, anything related to VRE, anything related to VRE would become uh, li like a bus, something called a bus, for instance. Okay, so if I want to use the VRE in this location, we can come here and create another route and add this. If I want to use the VRE once again in another location, we add another route, for instance, and use it in another location. So these are called like buses. Okay, I think they are very useful for organizing the workflows. Um, okay, initially it can be slightly confusing, but it's very important for organization of complicated workflows. Now there's something also called, okay, for example, here in this example, okay, uh, if I want to create, okay, let's delete this one. Now I want to, let's delete this one as well. For example, if I want to create an upscaler, a latent upscale or like a high risk fix, let's let it upscale by. Okay. And I want to have this into another bus, for example, to another case sampler, which will do a second bus using, for example, okay, now let's assume that we are using here Euler A, this ancestor, okay, Euler A. It doesn't really matter that much. Okay, the first bus is 20, the second bus is, for example, is 15 or 10. Okay, and we want to have uh, like high risk fix, so we would reduce the denoising level down to 50%. Now, after this location, we want to decode and display the image. So, preview the image. Now, in this location, we can also, now before the upscale we can also decode and display the image preview the image so the point here that we have vre here we have vre here we have the same model so if we want to drag this line down to this location once again so uh, the lines go underneath each other so this is not a good organization this is not a good organization at all so we use something like the routes or like the buses like i've said before okay so this can be slightly clearer in this uh, in this methodology okay now the same applies for uh, for the positive prompt and negative prompt now because we might have many things such as model positive prompts negative prompts we can use something called a bus now a bus there are multiple nodes for a bus for example such as the bus node it tells us this is from WAS node suit the purpose of this bus is just an organizational matter so for example if we have a very large workflow so we can, for example, press Alt and drag to this location. And we can have, uh, instead of moving each, uh, each individual line, we can move the entire bus like this. Now there's another bus called, for example, uh, from basic pipe, pipe. Now from basic pipe, it's just like, uh, just like a different methodology of doing the same thing. So it's not really that important, okay? Something called, or oh, two basic pipe, two basic pipe. So this becomes like a connection from and to. But I think that the WS are more useful because we can have the bus like this and we can have like uh, get nodes from this location at the same time. So this looks more useful in this methodology. And with just like a line. Now over time we can actually, uh, we can also reduce this like this here. Okay, for example here, I want the model Okay, so instead of, of using this individual stuff here, we can use clip, we can use VRE, okay, and remove this one. We can also use the positive, positive prompt and the negative prompt, for example, because we might use the same thing over and over again. So we can, in this, in this case, we can have organized this in a different way. So by this location, we have all the information that we need in this location, okay? And becomes just a matter, a matter of organization. So we don't know, need uh, these things anymore, these routes. They, they become just an excessive, something extra. So now I want the model. We just drag it to this location. We don't want to have uh, interconnections, uh, crossing interconnections, okay? We drag the positive, drag the negative, and we have our stuff here. We can have a bus for uh, a route for this one. Now, once we are done, we can come to this location, for example, and have this from the VRE, for instance. 
come once again and use the model the same model the same positive prompt we can use another another prompt we might continue using the same model the same information so if we have a bus or a root system that would be uh, much much better and much easier okay so we can see for example this is the image so the point is just that this is an organizational matter that we can use for example we can use routes instead of the buses and use reroutes by clicking alt we can have we can control okay control c control v so we can have these things like buses was just to pass information from one location to another so this is just an organizational matter nothing more so this helps us, helps us to produce more modular more modular workflows on the long run now uh, one last thing uh, we notice here that we have different colors for example the model usually have uh, this color the clip have like a, a yellow something uh, here like an orange color for example for the vre so usually for example, uh, initially we don't have a color for the roots. For example, if we have a clip, we can see that the color will change and becomes like yellow. This helps us to uh, recognize what this color, what this node is without knowing where it came from, just based on colors. For example, if I drag this to VRE, we we'll change the color will change in this location. Okay, so the positive prompt, for instance, we know that this is conditioning. This is uh, an orange color. This is more like reddish. The orange color is more like uh, conditioning. Conditioning could be positive or negative. So this helps us to recognize what this is exactly. So this is it about this video. I hope this video was useful and uh, have a good day.